Hello, good morning. Good to have you on the program. Uh, you say you do not have money. Good morning, sir. How are you? <laughs> Senator, you say you do not have money to become oh. Senate president. So how much money does one need yes. to become president of Nigeria <laughs> Senate? And uh, how much is uh, whoever you are supporting right now, since you have withdrawn for financial reasons, how much is he spending? How much is being shared? Well, um, let me say that. Uh, good morning, Ruben. It's nice talking to you. It's been a while. <laughs> Real long right. time. Yes. Well, uh, let me say uh, that it's unfortunate, as everybody has now known, that um, the Senate presidency or the leadership also is more of a money something than capacity, capability, or um, other, other, other qualifications that are supposed to matter most. Having said that, uh, back to what you asked me, uh, truly I'm the one leading the campaign for Akpabio for reasons I've stated earlier, and maybe I should just even state it now, that it is based on the need to have stability, equity, justice, and fairness in the country, considering the heightened um, concern about some issues, especially uh, the zoning, the religion, and whatever. Uh, when the president spoke to me about considering stepping down, coupled with the fact you said I don't have the money to go into this current battle, that money is playing more role than qualification or whatever, I, I obliged and agreed to work for or to campaign for Apabio for many reasons. And uh, so far, so good. And us, uh, the stability group, which I lead, is not about money. It's about stability in the country by ensuring that there is fairness, justice, and equity in terms of who now leads or becomes the number three citizen. Uh, bearing in mind that the number one, two are all uh, Muslims, and uh, bearing in mind also that the South-South, where um, Apabio comes from, have never since 1999 had a shot uh, of the uh, Senate presidency or even the speakership. So we thought that um, uh, having Apabio, with the experience that he has being one time the minority leader in the Senate and one time minister, a governor, a commissioner, with that kind of experience, and the fact that I think he is the most ranking from South-South, from the senators that we have, especially of the APC uh, extraction, uh, I had no problem with my conscience throwing my weight behind him. And so far, so good. Hi, Senator um, Ndome. Thank you for joining us. I, I really want to get into this money politics that you allege because that's huge. You said that not only is vote buying before you know, elections in terms of who gets to be president, who gets to be governor. You say that money politics is also for the Senate presidency and it is the highest bidder. So are you saying that Senator Gozul Akpabio was one who was able to pay the highest amounts to be you know, zoned and accepted? as perhaps from the APC's National Working Committee, the candidate of the APC for Senate presidency, was he the one who was able to spend the most amount of money? And when you're talking about money, like how much was being shared? Well, I don't know about that, but let me make this clear. If uh, we are sure that we had enough money, if we are talking about the money politics, then we'll not be campaigning. Then we'll not be going around talking to stakeholders, talking to our colleagues, making them understand that money uh, should, may, should not be the major determinant. But the important consideration, as I, I, I stated, is supposed to be about capacity, capability. Besides that, most importantly, in this country, we look at equity, justice, and fairness. Uh, back to what you are talking about, I said it in sem um, several times that the unfortunate thing that is happening these days is that most of the people that are trying are, are talking about the leadership. Uh, fortunately, uh, one of them was on this year program, and it's all worldwide now. I don't want to talk about that, but uh, uh, fortunately, people can judge for themselves. 
But uh, it's not on, in our camp. It's not money. It's not about money. It's about conviction. It's about trying to convince our colleagues that we need to have somebody from South out as the Senate president, coupled with the fact that the president, uh, the elect, uh, has him as the, his preferred candidate, and also the party has endorsed uh, the candidate, and we feel that the party uh, that, and that candidate is equally qualified, that is Okpabio. So it's not about money in our, on our side. It is the other candidates that are talking about money, and the only qualification that they are displaying is the, 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 uh, the amount of money that they try to, uh, they, they tell the senators elect that they can give them. I, I, people are talking about figures. Nobody has approached me about money, but definitely if we, money is going around, and uh, some are talking about 10, 20, 30, even 40, or even more than that. And some are even boasting that um, uh, they are going to give every senator up to $200,000 or whatever. Uh, figures are flying. That is the truth. I'm not the only one uh, talking about that. And uh, that is honestly very unfortunate. Okay. Uh, figures are flying around. You are talking about uh, some are boasting they might give up to $200,000. At first, I would like to learn from you because you're yeah. you're a veteran in this business. You got 28 votes in 2019 when yes. you contested to be Senate president. Uh, how much did that cost you? Yes. That venture cost you. So like, let me just know a benchmark. I know the money might have increased due to inflation because you know as inflation goes up in Nigeria, bribe too increases in number because bribe is also inflation dependent. It's an economy too in Nigeria. So how much did that process cost you? Well, and secondly, the second question I'd like well, to ask me, you is, okay, answer that first before I ask you the second question. Well, uh, let me say that if I had enough money that time, I said I would have won. So it was not talking about money. Okay. If I had used money or had money to use that time, my votes would have been more than 28. Those that voted for me, those 28 votes are genuine votes uh, from people that uh, did not vote me because of money. Okay. Because I didn't have the money to, to throw around or to give at that time anyway. Okay, so that means the person against you then, uh, Mr. Lawan, had money to throw around. That's why he got more votes, right? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Lawan. Yeah, yeah. He made, not only that he had money to throw around, but um, he even made money out of it. Oh, they gave him money too to campaign. Okay. So let me get this yeah, right. Yeah, so many people, there were money. Okay. Well, as I told you, it started that time. Okay, good. So that means uh, if I'm to extrapolate from four years ago, what you're saying is that probably two people will be giving Senator Gosul Akpabio to money to campaign on this because you said if Ahmed Lawa can make money out of it and I'm just making an extrapolation, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Secondly, I'd like to ask, can well, you, I, can you well, say, can you well, say, let, hang on a minute, sir. Can you say God's will Akpabio with how he ran the NDDC? When he was minister, can you say that record can vouch for him to get the position of Senate president? Don't forget, under him, we had fainting Professor Ponde when he was in NDDC. Can you say that record is good enough for him after all the shenanigans that happened in NNDC, NDDC? Can you say that record is good for him to vouch for Senate presidency? Well, in the statement you have made, um, let me say that I, I am not here to speak on behalf of um, uh, Apabio as to all these allegations that are thrown here and there. Every politically exposed person, including myself, if you give my opponent a chance, he will come and say all sorts <coughs> of things uh, on me. But um, let me say there were cases, serious cases of corruption and all that during the NDDC. And that has been in the history of NDDC right from uh, the inception. And so a Pabio's uh, time cannot be exception. But you are talking about uh, the MD and then uh, other individuals. Uh, I thought you would say this is what has been accused, and, uh, I mean, or the accusation of uh, uh, on uh, uh, Pabio. And even then, even with that, in this country, Allegations like this are very common, especially with the politically exposed persons. Until and, and, and unless there is clear uh, 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 conviction or evidence beyond reasonable doubt 
then you cannot, you have been talking about all this. It's everywhere in Nigeria these days, everywhere. And I, I told you, there is no politically exposed person, especially if um, he is contesting like that of uh, Pabio, that cannot be accused of one thing or the other. But do you know the same Pabio you are saying all of this for? That there was a story in March 2022 that says Senate threatened that Pabio NDDC boss with arrest of alleged non-payment of 2.2 billion contracts. And there was also about a talk oh, about not constituting the, of the board. There was a story on the 31st of March 2022 that says Senate threatens that Pabio and NDDC boss with arrest over non alleged non-payment of 2.2 billion contracts. There was also the case of the board not constituted for the NDDC all this while. So that's why I say the last position that Pabio held before his vying for Senate president now is the position that is the overseeing minister of the NDDC. Can you say he has done well enough to be able to now launch pad into the Senate presidency? That's the question I ask you, sir. Well, Erufai, I don't know what is the relationship between his contest and uh, his performance at NDDC. All I know is that Section 50 of the Constitution says that the senators shall elect among themselves the Senate uh, president. What qualification uh, does he require is that he must be senator-elect, and he is senator-elect. And also, he couldn't have contested if he had any criminal record or the, not allegations. Uh, as you said, the constitution of um, uh, the board of NN NDDC. Uh, Rufai, as I, you are just pushing me into a discussion that I really don't want, but because I'm the DG, I have to say this. The constitution of NDDC board is not responsibility of the minister, it is that of the president. Even the recent one that they had and confirmed was sent to us by Mr. President. I think the minister can have some input, but not necessarily a decision on to who becomes what. And also, uh, as you say, he's the overseeing uh, minister. If you say that uh, Opabio did not oversee NDDC properly, uh, allowing for such allegation. I mean, those allegations are supposed to be directed to whoever was the NDDC uh, MD or uh, chairman or whatever in the board at that time. Not uh, Apabio. Apabio, he was a minister of uh, Niger Delta, not minister of NDDC. I mean, NDDC is one of the institutions or agencies of government under uh, his ministry. Well, you can't hold somebody uh, uh, responsible for um, actions that are not directly under him. And as you said, he's supposed to be a supervising minister. Well, if you say that Opabio did not effectively supervise uh, NDDC, and then that is also um, uh, something that uh, can be argued and, um, you know, give him... Uh, some people would say he has tried, some people would say he has not done anything, and that is normal. Two things, uh, Senator. Number one, some people have argued yeah. that uh, Senator Opabio is being supported by the Solidarity Group for reasons of religion yes, and what is I'm called, and, and what is called uh, also, uh, uh, you know, uh, balance, regional balance. Aquavio himself has yes. said publicly that nobody should judge him on the basis of his performance in uh, President Buhari's cabinet. So what exactly, beyond yes. religion, and uh, regional stability is he bringing to the table mm. other than this religion and uh, and, and uh, stability <laughs> and then secondly it's related no south, south southwest women compatriots they call themselves on monday held a press conference in uh, abuja and their main grouse is that they do not think that akwabio is qualified or is he a fit and proper person to be president of the Senate. And that if the 10th Assembly goes ahead to choose him, that they will, they will, they will, they will protest naked on the streets of uh, Abuja. What uh, strategy do you have for that? Because uh, women are threatening to go onto the streets naked. Uh <laughs> but let me tell you, in Nigeria, you know what's going on. Uh, first of all, let me uh, take the first uh, uh, comment. Um, our decision to support Apabio is based on 
my, my consideration, yes, you are talking about religious balancing, you are talking about zonal balancing, and you are talking about what Opabio needs to bring to the table. In the 10th Senate, we are planning to have Senate president, not senator's president. So, in, in, in fact, he doesn't need any qualification. What he needs to do is uh, what he has already. He is a senator elect, he is educated, he can read and write. In the typical situation, the Senate president is just a presiding officer. He has no vote even. The vote can only, his only vote can only count when there is a tie. He's supposed to sit there and preside, and preside, not, not, not to rule or uh, to take a decision. He is not executive president, he's not going to be executive president of the Senate. He is going to be presiding Senate. Uh, I mean, he's going to be a senator presiding over his colleagues. And we say he's going to be one among equals, not even first among equals. And if it is that that you are considering, uh, the only qualifications to be the Senate President is what he has already, in fact more. Uh, one is that he must be a Senator-elect. Two, he must uh, uh, be a ranking senator, not a new senator. Because if he goes down there, he was a minority leader, he knows what to do from day one. And that is all. And then uh, he needs the acceptability of the senators elect who are going to vote on that day. And so far, alhamdulillah, we have 70 people that sign or endorse the candidature of, uh, of Akpabio. First on the list is myself. And then last on the list is from Baelsa. I can tell you that, uh, Abati. Okay. So, and uh, coming to the women, uh, in this country where people <coughs> take advantage of poverty, tomorrow, eh? tomorrow, as a DG, I can pay for women, not only to demonstrate that they are in support of Opabio, but also to threaten that if Opabio does not become the Senate president, they will also walk, come to the National Assembly and walk naked. That one is normal in Nigeria. It's right. common. So Once still, you have the it, money, you can hire women. And I'm sure <clears throat> I can tell you that I, I did my investigation. The journalists, some journalists called me yesterday. I say, what, I say, ask me what is my response to what is happening that the woman. I say, look, I can easily now arrange for 3,000, 10,000 women in Abuja here to come All out right. tomorrow. All right, uh, Senator arrange Indume. for that as long as you have a price. All right, Senator Indume. So still back yeah. to that money matter where everything is price. Um, what's your cost or just spending money to win elections. I think it's just important to mention that you put it on record yes. that it doesn't take any qualifications to be the Senate president, just be a senator elect. No need to check out, you know, to look at your records. No. But let me ask you with regards to rubber stamp Senate, where a number of people are concerned about is that they it, do not well, want let to me say... ask you. Let me ask you before I answer that question. Okay, go ahead. If you are a senator elect, is there anything that disqualifies you from being a uh, Senate president? Oh, no, but we're asking in, on, in terms of on what record are you campaigning for your, for your candidate, Senator Akbabio, to be Senate president? And you're saying it doesn't really matter in terms of his track record said, as a minister, as a governor. But I need to no, move on to the final question very quickly, and then you can respond um, both of them at the wait same time. Wait, now, please. Let Senator Jume, we're almost out this. of time. We're, we're almost out of time. Let me just ask the final question, because this is quite important. It, and then you can wrap up with your statement on the previous um, session. So the, it's around the $800 million loan approved by the, by the National Assembly for the President, Muhammad um, Buhari, a member of the House Committee on Loans, Aids and uh, Debt Management, has said that it has been approved. And what many Nigerians are, Nigerians are wondering is that, is this what we should ex expect in the 10th Assembly, where it is a rubber stamp, and despite criticisms, despite, um, you know, uh, people speaking against that particular loan request, you still went ahead to approve it. What's the justification for that? And what should we look forward to in the 10th Assembly? Well, you are asking the wrong person. My position on this loan uh, is very clear. And I mean, um, I woke up this morning in order to come and attend this. I thought Nigerians would get something out of it. Let, let me tell you, 
The loan issue is something that is in the public domain there. I have even preparing to go to court to stop that, if I can. And you are talking to me about uh, what they did in the House of Representatives. I'm not in the House of Representatives. I have stated my reason why I'm against that loan. I'm not against borrowing, but if we are to borrow to consume as they are planning to do now, I'm against it. Especially in this case, when you look at the statistics, I have it here. If you borrow $800 million and convert it at the going rate, official rate, is 450 you will have about 360 billion if you divide it to their planned number of people that they want to distribute that money to that is 50 million a person will go with the 7200 which is not even enough to buy a bag of uh, rice by the time they distribute that money we will be left with nothing but paying for it for the next 40 years as they say but if the government is smart enough to say that we borrow this money and divide it uh, by each of the local government 770 for local government. Each local government will have at least 465 million 106 uh, uh, 116,000 naira. With that, you can build blocks of classroom. With that, you can build primary health care centers. With that, you can buy fertilizer for farmers, and the impact will be felt. But with, with this, it's just going to be another money down the drain. But even that, you are just uh, about two weeks ago, two weeks uh, to go, and you are saying that you are borrowing 800 million and oh, going ahead to spend that uh, 800 uh, million dollars in, 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 in two weeks. That I'm totally against. But as I said, this is democracy. Some people can have their way, and I'm having my say on Arise TV this morning. I'm against this loan of 800 million naira, and I was expecting that Nigerians will, will, will make their voice known that they are against this uh, the, the borrowing at uh, at this time uh, having said that back to uh, this apabio's uh, case with senate presidency you should understand as i said the main qualification the only qualification that is required after what he has gone through is for him to be senate elect a senator elect which he is and he should be a ranking senator because uh, it is in this senate rule that you must be a, a, a ranking senator because you become a senate president and for what will happen tomorrow Ndume doesn't know nobody knows but we have our plans we have our agenda for the 10th senate uh, which will uh, so soon unveil and we are just putting some flesh onto it and let me also say this issue of robust stamp that you are talking about in american democracy where we are copying the, the Senate president is the vice president. The vice president is supposed to be the most loyal person to the president. So when you are talking about that, it's not about personalities. It is about the institution and what they stand for. In this Senate, current Senate now in America, and that is the democracy we are copying. The, the vice president, uh, the, this woman is uh, the, the, the Senate president, and she comes to vote only when there is a tie because they have 200 uh, senators. So if you have 100, 100, 100 on the other uh, uh, I mean 100 senators, if they have 50-50, then she will come and cast her vote. But Nigerians, including journalists that are supposed to be talking about what matters, you are talking about trivialities. That is what is bringing this country down. Well, on that note, Senator Aline Dume, we would like to thank you very much for joining us.